Kibbs. This is future Kibbs. Please. I beg of you. Remember the belt issue. Remember. Or else you're gonna cause belt Mageddon. Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz, and welcome back to Satisfactory. Where last time we got to work on our first mega project and built our first item spines in the base so that we could start processing over 3,000 quartz per minute for our new crystal oscillator production. And now that we've refined all of the quartz crystals we need, and with our Katerian production pretty much under wraps, we're now a third of the way to our goal. And next up, we're gonna mess with the AI limiters. And according to my calculations, we're gonna need about 262 of them per minute for our production line. And each AI limiter requires 25 copper sheets per minute and 100 quick wire per minute. So with a little bit more fumbling of numbers, we can find out that we need almost 900 Keterium and about 4,800 copper per minute to deal with all the quick wire and copper sheets. Fortunately for us though, we already have our Keterium production under wraps, so the only big meme is copper. And even with all the resource collection we're doing so far in this playthrough, we only have about a quarter of the production we need. Because oh boy, copper sheets take a lot of copper. It's a 2 to 1 ratio, which is hyper expensive. And that's the main reason why we need so much copper, just for these freaking sheets, brother. However, super quick, there's actually another option for copper sheets that you guys let me know about in the comments below last time. So if we look them up, we can see that we actually have an alternate recipe, which combines the copper ingots and some water into copper sheets. And instead of being a 2 to 1 ratio, it's a 1 to 1 ratio. We just have to make this in a refinery and use a ton of water. So let's quickly check it out, see if we actually want to use this. So 22.5 copper ingots, and then that's 22.5 copper sheets, yeah, simple. Of course though, we're gonna need more water for this, which is like, I don't wanna really do that. However though, I've done the math, and it looks like we'd need about 59 refineries making copper sheets here. And then 59 times 22.5, equals hmm, uh, 1,307 water per minute. And we're pretty much at space elevator height for where we're doing the production of all these copper sheets, so I don't really want to package more water and send it up here just yet. At least not for copper, because the one thing with copper is it's the second most abundant resource in the world after iron. So I don't mind gathering like 5,000 of it. It's littered everywhere, so I think we can handle gathering up some more. And also, as I had shown last time, we actually do have the smelter capacity already built to deal with all the copper. So, we need 160 smelters to smelt all the copper down, and luckily we have 80 per system here. Then we have another system over here that I have to belt together, and then we'll need like over 100 constructors as well. And man, you know when I say that? Whoa, that refinery method is really looking better and better, eh? Hmm. Oh my gosh, I can already feel it in my hand. Like my hand knows, please, kibitz, don't do this. Don't belt all this together now. Another 80 smelters being belted and over 100 constructors being belted? <laughs> oh, dude. It's rough. It's so rough. Maybe dealing with the water will be easier. You know what? No. I know it will be. So if we're going with that route, then the big thing is gonna be water again. So we already are packing up, what is this, three, six, nine, 12, 1,200 water per minute up to that floor and sending the empty canisters back down. So we're going to pretty much have to double this. On a good note, we do still have a lot of room on this floor for doing that, and even better, Past Kibbs knew. He knew it in his bones, brother, that he would need more water. Gotta stay hydrated, right? <laughs> but we do have a water train somewhere, right? Ah, oh, yeah, dude. The hydration station, brother. And the hydration station is the second train stop that's hooked up to our outpost way over here. 
Because one of the main things it's bringing back is the quartz, like I showed last time, and a full water train. So that's nine freight cars just of water, right? Yep, nine. So nine times three is 2,700 water per minute. Oh my god, that is, that's a lot. That's a lot, a lot of water. Oh my god, we can do everything with that. Ooh, perfect. All right, so water's actually dealt with. We just gotta pack it up. Oh, and quickly speaking of train stations, I asked you guys what we should name this one, and honestly, there's one that I really, really liked, and that was calling this the Rose Line, because it's mainly gathering quartz, and quartz is like kind of red like a rose color, you know what I'm saying? And Rose Line is just nice. Anyway though, we got most things under wraps here. Just have to start packing some water and sending it on up, and then we can rock and roll from there. Oh man, so I said it once and I'll say it again. Packing water is ridiculous. So we have 60 refineries set up now, all for packing water. Each is kind of a setup of five, so we get a full water pipe of 300, and then 300 divided by 60 is five, and this whole system works out. We're kind of. We need to revamp it considerably because there has been an important update that happened to the game. I mentioned it last time, but it's essentially the unpacking recipe was buffed. So you pack water at 60 water per minute and you get 60 packaged water. However, you can unpack water at twice the rate. Which is really good, because you need less refineries for unpacking, obviously. And also, you can be more efficient with your lines. So with the belts here, every set of 5 refineries will have 300 packaged water, right? However, we have 480 belts, so what I've done is I split one of the 300 lines to merge with another system. So now we have a 450 line of packaged water. Wow. <laughs> And yeah, I just broke everything down into 450 lines of packaged water. For the new system at least. The old system I have to completely revamp. Also, apologies for the jitteriness, but when we're near the train stations, the game is like freaking out. <laughs> oh, but yeah. So I'll have to redo all of this, and we should have enough belt capacity in our item spine behind the piece to bring everything all the way up to like the top floors. And then we'll just have eight lines coming down with the empty canisters again. Closing the loop. Yeah, we still have a quite a bit of crazy belt work to do here. However, luckily, since our hindsight was so good, we left all of the space underneath our train station pretty much empty. So bringing over the water from the water train over to here wasn't too bad. Just a ton of piping, a lot of logistics, and a little bit of finicky rascally stuff. It definitely could have been worse. The thing is, though, things get a little tricky at the top of our base here now. So we did make a bunch of water unpackers, and luckily, they're only at half capacity. So right now, we have how many? Let me count again. Okay, so right now we actually have 20 unpacking refineries. So 20 times 120 is 2,400. So we can unpack 2,400 water per minute from this system. But then our quartz refinement requires a thousand water per minute. And then our new system we just calculated to make all of the copper sheets needs 1,307 water per minute. Oh, so wait, wow, this all like works out perfectly. Huh, that's unexpected. Okay, so that's really good. We can unpack enough water. The thing is though, we just have to rework this entire system to deal with the new 450 lines of water. And also, if all these are running at 100%, each system of 5 will have about 600 water per minute coming out of each. Which isn't too bad either, really. Because just in the middle here, if we have a couple of these splitter guys, and then we add in supports here, what we can end up doing is adding in a pump right in the middle here. And the pumps stop water from flowing back, like in the direction they're not facing. So water can flow out here, but not back in. And then if I'm correct, I'm pretty sure that the two pumps here will combine here and go this way. And then this one will be split up between 
this pipe and this pipe. Okay, well, we have enough packaged water in the system still to run this for a little bit. So why don't we just test it out? See what happens. So you go to there, you go to there, the pumps are powered. I'm just gonna look at the flow rate here. Okay, though. This is looking like it's getting to 300. And this is at 300. Wow, okay, so this just works. It's fine. Neat. So that's like hardly a modification to anything. Just have to move a couple of these fluid buffers around. But then we're also gonna have to add in two more water lines. So we have eight. And then we have to divvy up the water properly. Because if each system of five is taking 600 water, we need to break these 450 lines in a strange way. So what we can do is we can have the 450 line go into a splitter and it splits into 150, 150, 150. Merge two of the 150 lines to 300. Boom, boom. And the other 150 will join up with a mirroring system that could be like right beside. So we do the same thing over here. That goes into another merger, making another 300 line. Doot, 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 doot. And then we just have one merger in the middle, somewhere in the middle anyway. It goes like this, and we just go from two lines to three lines. And all these lines will be 300 lines. So we'll have 12 water lines. And then we could make maybe this floor and the floor above just a refining floor. In fact, I think that's like the best strat ever. Because looking at how many floors we have left in like phase one here, we have the two floors right now that can be for refineries. So this floor, and then up to there. And then we'll have one, two, three more floors above that. And we could use that just for, hmm, constructors? Yeah. Like how many constructors could we fit in this uh, surface area? Probably about 400? Yep, I'm liking this plan. So circling back to what I showed you before, we're gonna be doing something like this. We're gonna be bringing all of the water lines up and this is gonna be a spicy, spicy project. Well, oh my god, I've been on a journey, ladies and gentlemen. Two trips to the psych ward and one long nap later, and the system is ready and running. So initially, I was gonna delete everything and just build a whole new system. But then I was like, wait a second, why would I do that? That's like throwing away a cell phone because a new one came out. It's ridiculous. So now from downstairs, we send up 450 water per line here. And these 450 lines go through a series of splitters, kind of like I said before, to make them 300 lines. And all the 300 lines just go in from both sides of this system into the middle. I think I overloaded something with too many containers though, so I have to balance all that out to make it all work. But generally speaking, everything else is fine. Then I just did this system, one, two, three, four, five. Then I had to do some on the roof here, six, seven, no. Is it seven? It's six systems, okay. Six systems of this. So we have 30 machines unpacking all of the water. But this is honestly nothing, nothing compared to the absolute pandemonium that I spent literally all day doing downstairs. Like legit, just call me the belt magician at this point. Holy, down here was a war zone. A war zone of tidiness. The belts to get them all straight and organized through all of this was just <laughs> out of this freaking world. There are belts everywhere. There are pipes moving up and down. There's water bottles moving all around. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. Like, look at this. Look at this. How do you get a straight line through here? Holy, there are times are just like, just clip the belt through a couple other belts, Kibbs. Do it. It'll be so much easier. But no. I persevered, straight lines, it's gorgeous, gorgeous I tell you! However, there's a lot that's just like collapsing and I have to check on to make sure the whole system works. But generally, like a few band-aids here or there, and it'll be working fine, and all the water will be upstairs for us to process with. Meaning we can get on to the next step, which is getting copper. And luckily, we don't need to get much, because since we need 1,300-ish water, we also need 1,300-ish copper ingots. The same ratio, right? And in our base, I'm pretty sure we have 1,200 copper, but then we only need to find like one more node or something, and then we'll have all the copper we need. However though, we still have to smelt the copper ore. So, 
I have to belt together another ED smelters through here, and then belt it upstairs. So I'll see you on the flip side of this room, where everything's all done now, and all of the copper is heading on up. Meaning it's time to refine. And thankfully for us, we only need to set up 60 refineries for this project, in the exact same way as we set up the quartz crystals here. And we can just do that on the other side of the room. We'll absolutely have plenty of space too. Like right here is 30. So we just need to copy this over there, except have it doubled up. And then GG. And then the only technical thing we're gonna have to do here is just make sure we make proper sets of this. And 300 divided by 22.5 equals 13.3, which is not a really fun number to work around. However, if we just set the clock speed to 89%, then our target production rate will be 20.2 per minute. And since the production rate is the same as the input rates, that means we'll need 20 copper ingots and 20 water per minute. Now that's a fun number to work with. So now 300 divided by 20 equals 15. So we'll just be making rows of 15 copper sheet refineries. And call it a day. Keep its weight. It is I, future Kibbs. And I heed with you. A warning. You're about to forget to do the thing. The thing. A mistake you did before that if you do not correct now will lead you into unending torment and the creation of this world's greatest disaster. Think about it. Fix it now before it is too late. But future kids, everything is looking fine. I planned things out perfectly. I've done all the things. Nothing should go wrong. No, present kids. Everything is about to go wrong. Hey, wait a second. I bet you're just a figment of my imagination. Another one of the voices, am I right? Of course you are. No, kids. Listen, I beg of you. So now we have ourselves our 60 refineries making all the copper sheets. And oh boy. Uh, some things went very well, other things didn't go well at all. In fact, it is almost a nightmare. No, it was a nightmare. I still am triggered by it. Man, my therapist is gonna be busy, busy, busy. But at least for these refineries, just kind of followed the method as we said, and we just have the 15 in a row. We do that four times, that's 60, messed with the, what is it? The rates inside of them, the clock speed and divvied things up properly. So the water is just one 300th line of water. We have it being split at the beginning. So half of it is going through the bottom here and half of it kind of flows through the top and goes through the other side, I think. I don't know if it works like that, but that's how I did it. And things are working quite fine. Making all the sheets we need and we are rocking and rolling. Except for here, where we're not rocking and rolling. But actually, we are rocking and rolling. It's actually down here. We're not rocking and rolling. How many times will I say this? Well, I've already lost my mind, so I'm in no danger of losing it any further. I don't know what's going on here. Clearly, I probably missed a pipe. That's all right. <laughs> Let's continue with good news. Is that a good idea? You better believe it. So, this is generally working, aside from that one weird part which is clearly just missing like a little pipe or something somewhere. Not a big issue. And then, yeah, the pipework looks pretty cool. That's a good thing. Look at all this. Looking spicy, looking interesting, right? You better believe it. So neat, so tidy. So, um, <laughs> okay, it's not exactly uh, neat or tidy. It's interesting though, very interesting that this pipe here doesn't have any water in it because it doesn't have a pump there ah you see that solved the issue easily done anyway though so yeah there's that and also the copper the copper was a bit of a thing because we had to break down the copper into some weird lines it needed to be about 350 ish so what I ended up doing is we have the lines of 300 copper coming up from just over in the wall there then I have a 120 line of copper coming up and I break that into four and have that connect up with all the other lines here. So it's like 340, eh. So we are wasting and overloading the system with a little bit of copper ore, but it's okay. Like when you're messing with decimal points, it's fine if they're overflowing by like 0.6 of a copper ingot or something like that. 
I considered this a win, and it's working well, aside from not having that one pump there. Now, <laughs> I'm, no, I'm, I'm like nervous about to explain this. Oh, I should have listened to future kids. I should have. I should have. I made a, just a, just an unbelievable mistake with the water. Like, the greatest hindsight of all time. And the worst thing is, I made this mistake before. Oh god, okay. I'll show you the example of what I've done here. Okay. So, say we have our packing stations and unpacking stations here, right? Alright. So pretend this is packing, and this is unpacking. The containers will flow from the unpacker, or from the packer to the unpacker, then the containers flow back from here to there. So the containers are just in a loop. And then at the end of these systems, there would be a certain, like, production line this would go to. So we'll represent the production lines like this as A, and this one as B. So what a normal, rational person would do is they'd have the water packing and, un and unpacking going to production line A. And then the stuff that is being, or then the containers fed in this system stays in this system. So all the empty containers get packed and repacked and unpacked and etc. All in this closed loop in production line A. And then you do the same in production line B. So the water gets filled and packaged unpackaged, the empty container goes back and gets filled again for production line B. And that's it. Everything is hunky-dory, and you're not going to run into any problems. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> here's what I did. <laughs> so that, uh, I didn't actually uh, measure or remember which production lines the unpacking and packing stations were in. So, how I set up this copper sheet thing over here with the unpacking and packing stations for the water, they don't match with a production line. So they go to random production lines, meaning the water usage rates on the other side are significantly different, meaning there's more containers probably coming out of this than are coming out of this, and then I have the containers from the B line going to the A line, and the A line going to the B line, and then multiply how confusing this explanation is by like seven, and you have the problem that I've set up for myself. And here's the thing. I did this unpacking and repacking thing already. I've made this mistake. It was just so long ago, I didn't remember. And now I regret everything. But yeah, we ran into this issue with our turbo fuel power plant. So again, I didn't match the input and the outputs at all. I just hooked up a water line to some unpackers let everything ride, and just didn't care or measure it. And that was that. What ended up happening then, was the production rates were all different, so some like loops or systems were getting overflowed with canisters, and there's too many canisters backing up in some, some areas had fuel canisters backing up everywhere, and it's just absolute pandemonium. Like the whole system broke down. So what we ended up having to do, is we just had to cycle the canisters through all of the systems to make it work. Because it particularly didn't matter uh, about the rates. We just overload the system with a lot of casters and had them go through and through. And as you can see just from here, like a lot more casters are being used here than are being used in this line. And this is kind of like the problem. And this is also the solution. So we just have the casters go through all these bins, and then when there's an empty space, uh, they go out of the system entirely. So they zig and zag, and then they go right back to the start of the system, and this works for what we're doing. But you see, here's the big problem. This system only has five lines of water and about 20 refineries. And the system we've built today is multiple times bigger than that. And we pretty much have like no space available to do any load balancing. And oh man, if I was complaining about belts before, this is probably the craziest belt creation I've ever put together here. So prepare yourself for True, pure, absolute pandemonium of the canister reorganizer disaster piece that I had to install to balance the system out. Oh my goodness, this took me 
a very long time. It, well, like, actually, not a lot, but like, mentally, I lost a month of my life from this. For sure. Guaranteed. We had about five tiles, and we had to get 12, count them, 12 storage containers mixing and distributing all of the canisters. So it's just like the system for the turbo fuel water stuff, except this is even bigger. And yeah, we managed to fit everything in here. So this is how it kind of works. We have all the empty canisters coming down. We don't know what rate they're coming down at. So what they all have to do is enter a bin, number one. So they all enter a bin. And then all of the canisters leave the bin and cycle through the top parts of all of these double storage containers. So it's just a zigzag of belts moving and grooving on through. And then at the end of all of this chain, they go all the way back to the beginning, which is actually way out there. So yeah, that's like the top part. It's all just one big loop cycling all the casters in the bottom output. Uh, these lines actually go to the sets of refineries that are packing the water. And yeah, this actually does work. It's just, ah oh gosh, it, it's not a bad project. It's just we had no space. No space. Like literally every tile in almost all of the airspace was used. In fact, I had to have uh, two of the containers just built out here because there's just too much going on, man. There's just too much. But it's done now. We're safe. And now the spaghetti monster will hide down there in the corner of the bottom of our base and we'll never have to look at it again. And by the way, that is a prime example why you want to give yourself some room when you're building because if you run into a problem like that, ho oh, oh ho boy! Uh, you're gonna lose your freaking mind. But anyway, that's gonna be all for today. We're gonna actually finish off the AI limiters when we actually make the crystal oscillators most likely now. Because I am just wiped from this project. So, I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you did, please remember to leave a like, and I'll see you in the next video! But for now, have a fantastic rest of your day, and bye bye <laughs>